Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture of the course Digital Electronics and Circuits. And in this particular lecture, we will be talking about counters. And counters are nothing but one more set of a sequential circuit. Correct? What is a counter? If we, if we have to see what is a counter, a counter is a register. that will go through a predetermined sequence of state upon application of clock pulses so basically we will have a set of predetermined states and a sequence of them for example let's assume that we have to go from a state from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 back to 0 and then to 1 to 2 to 3 so basically we will call it as a 2 bit counter because all these four states could be realized using two binary bits so this will be a 2 bit up counter so basically we are counting from 0 1 2 3 right so this is a counter because we have a predetermined sequence of state and this movement will happen upon application of clock pulses counters are usually classified into two counters a ripple counter uh, and a synchronous counter synchronous counters are the ones a counter where all the flip flops in the design receive the common clock pulse And since they receive a common clock pulse, the change of state is determined from the present state. So whenever we have to, uh, basically whenever we have to design a synchronous counter, the design would be similar to what we have seen till now for analysis of sequence, uh, sequential circuits as well as design of sequential circuits. You remember we, uh, we designed one sequence recognizer. In a similar way, what we can do is we can design a synchronous counter as well using the approach we have already looked at where we will have present input uh, present states input output next state and we can always try flip-flop inputs and then depending upon the state table and state diagram we can rework and reverse engineer and we can come with a combinational circuit to design a that particular clocked sequential circuit so in a similar way like we designed previous clocked sequential circuit we can drive the synchronous counter also However, a ripple counter is a counter where flip-flop output transition serves as a source for triggering other flops, right? So output of one flip-flop acts as a source for triggering other flip-flops. So this is a meaning of a ripple counter. Now, if at all, we have to look at an example of both the ripple counters as well as a synchronous counter, right? What we can uh, look is like we can uh, start with a ripple counter. And we can say that ripple counter is something which will uh, and whenever we draw a ripple counter, like let's take a well, let's draw a four bit BCD binary called decimal counters, which goes from zero to one to two, so on up to nine and then comes back to zero. And it has to be ripple. So basically what we, we uh, all the analysis which we saw analysis and design, right? We saw in previous lecture for clocked sequential circuits. We can't use that particular thing over here because in this case output of one of the flip flops will serve as a trigger for another flip flops. So what we have to do is we have to logically solve this equation and let's assume we solve it like this Q3. This is our 2 raised to power 2. This bit is Q1. This bit is Q0. What we have to do is we have to go from a state called 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 1. And then again it will go back to this particular state right this is what we want to achieve now basically if we analyze this circuit right what we can say is q0 is complementing on every clock edge so q0 complements on every clock edge how about q1 or basically this is q2 because 2 raised to power 0 2 raised to power 1 is and this is q1 let's call it q1 let's call it q2 right it complements when q8 is equal to 0 
and q1 goes from 1 to 0 this is like negage right but we also go from a state 9 to state 0 right if in that case what we will say is q2 is cleared or q2 is equal to 0 if q8 is equal to 1 and q1 is seen a negative edge is this clear now if we look at q4 we can simply say q4 toggles from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 whenever q2 toggles from 1 to 0 q q2 complements at the neg edge of q2 similarly what we can say is similar if we use the same deduction here right what we'll be able to say is like q8 is complemented correct q8 is complemented it changes to value 0 uh, to 1 or 1 to 0 depending upon other bits right whenever q4 is and q2 is 1 1 and q1 moves from 1 to 0 so basically clock edge for q8 will become q1 so basically we say it toggles this particular thing toggles from 0 to 1 whenever q1 moves from 1 to 0 and both of them were 1 right and q8 is cleared is equal to 0 if either this or this is 0 and q1 sees a negative edge so basically what we did over here is since we can't use a, a basic approach which we saw till now for milli and moore machines what we try to do is like we assumed that okay one of the this particular bit since it toggles at every clock edge we can supply the input clock over here and then other other particular bits right we try to drive like okay we try to see the relationship of those bits with the previous bits so q2 bit we said like it toggles whenever there is a toggle whenever a negative of q1 is seen and it's cleared whenever q8 is equal to 1 wherever it is is equal to 0 we will at a negative it will complement similarly q4 what we say it will toggle from 0 to 1 whenever there is a negative on q2 but for q8 we will say q8 complements it goes from 0 to 1 whenever q4 q2 is 1 1 and q1 goes to 0 and similarly it's clear to 0 whenever q4 plus q2 is equal to 0 and q1 goes from 1 to 0 so basically what would this mean is my q1 flop is driven by a clock clock for this is driven by q1 clock of this is driven by q2 and clock of this is again driven by q1 and if we have to form a circuit for this particular thing right for this particular circuit how we would uh, say is we would simply say is let's draw a counter so let's name this counter as 1 this counter as 2 this is 4 these are 4 j and k flip flops let's see let's assume we are using j and k flip flops and what would happen is since all the action is happening at negative of a clock what we will do so is we will take a negative edge triggered flip flop right so basically this will be the clock output over here is nothing but q1 right what we will do is j and k flip flop 1 and 4 are tied off to 1 and 1 because we didn't have any other situation over here and characteristic table for flip-flop is and if both are 1 we will complement q bar right so this is 1 these both are 1 right this clock this is j and k k is 1 over here j this clock is nothing but q1 correct Similarly, this clock over here is nothing but Q2. This clock over here is nothing but Q1. Right? K is 1 for all of them. 
if you see this is a circuit and this is the equation we derived this toggles right every alternate clock it's a negative edge trigger flip-flop so basically what will happen if we have one and one as an input what would happen is as a passage of the clock qt plus one next state would be equal to q bar so basically this state will toggle at every clock edge now what is happen our q q2 was whatever q2 was complementing whenever q1 was toggling from 1 to 0 and q8 was 0 and it was getting clear when q8 was 1 correct so basically what we would do over here is in this particular case the j input for this particular equation instead of driving it to 1 right what we will do is we will connect this input to q8 bar once it's connected to q8 bar we will know that okay whenever q8 bar q8 bar if q8 is 0 q8 bar would be 1 right q2 would complement accordingly similarly for j what we saw for the eighth one q8 what we saw was it is complemented when q4 q2 are 1 1 and q1 toggles from 1 to 0 so clock has to be q1 and it's it's cleared it's made equal to 0 when q4 plus q2 is equal to 0 so what we will do in this case is we will have an AND gate and input of AND gate would be nothing but Q2 and Q4 and this is our 4 bit BCD ripple counter this is a bit complex because there is no standard approach of doing this so I would suggest that uh, basically you go through these two foils uh, and spend some time on this try to understand what do we mean whenever we say that q1 complements on every clock edge q2 complements whenever q1 moves from 1 to 0 and q8 is 0 and it gets cleared whenever q8 is equal to 1 and this would explain why we are inputting q8 bar over here correct and similarly once you you have understood this particular thing you will understand like why we are inputting q1 over here q4 was simple because we said like it's only complementing whenever there's a q1 goes from q2 goes from 1 to 0 so we directly supplied a clock over here j and k are kept is equal to 1 because based upon characteristic equation whenever j and k are 1 output is equal to q bar similarly for the last one clock has to be q1 because that's what we see that whenever q1 toggles from 1 to 0 and q4 and q2 are both 1 and 1 basically both are 1 and 1 output would be 1 and in that case output would toggle because j would become equal to 1 k would be 1 and basically whenever both are 0 my j would be 0 and if j is 0 my output will get cleared whenever both are 0 0 0 correct hopefully this was clear please spend some time on this one and as per the lecture uh, let's move on to next set of counters which we will call as a synchronous counter right we have already seen uh, design of and analysis of clock sequential circuits so designing a synchronous counter would be similar to that we could define uh, we could eventually design it using a d flip flop t flip flop or jk flip flop we already compared d and jk flip flop as to which one is better this has excitation table with many don't care so combination circuit required is less this will require more combinational circuit but state tables for j and k flip flop are complex because we have to drive flip flop inputs based upon next state and present state looking at the excitation table right and whenever we uh, talk about a synchronous counter right so let's try to i will okay let's do one simple thing i will just give a basic exp, uh, let's try to design a binary app counter counter which is four bits basically it will mean we will have 16 states from 0 0 0 0 to 0 0 0 1 to 0 0 1 0 so on so forth till 1 1 1 1 and post this we will get back to our original state which is 0 0 0 0 right and whenever we do this we will uh, if we do it using j and k flip-flop we will need to remember characteristic equation of j and k flip-flop and then j q q t plus 1 both being 0 no change j being 0 this being 1 basically output is 0 so this is reset j being 1 both is q plus q bar which is set and both being 1 what would happen is this is complement 
based upon this we will drive excitation table where we say we have qt we have qt plus one what is the value j and k 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 stays 0 it's either a no change or a reset no change or reset means j has to be 0 k has to be x 0 to 1 it's either a complement or it's a set complement or set would mean j is 1 k is don't care similarly 1 to 0 would means it's either a complement or a reset which would mean k is 1 and j is don't care similarly 1 to 1 is either a set operation or a no change operation which would k is equal to 0 and j is don't care so we will have to use this excitation table which we derived in like one minute we don't need to remember it using this table we will have to drive or make a circuit for synchronous counter with four states so just to give you an example right so let's say this is our present states this is our next states and uh, these are our flip-flop inputs how many flip-flop inputs we will have j3 k3 j2 k2 j1 k1 j0 k0 these are flip-flop inputs right so how many states we will have 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 to 1 on a clock edge then if present state is 1 we will go into present state of 2 we have present state of 2 we will go to next state of 3 so on and so forth where at the end we will have a present state of 1 1 1 1 and we will go to next state of 0 0 0 0 now we know a present state which is qt we know a next state which is qt plus 1 we know excitation table of j and k flip-flop right what we can do is we can add values over here for example this would be we are going from 0 to 0 this will be 0x this will be 0x this will be 0x Similarly, we are going from 0, uh, if we drew for 0, right, 0 to 1, 1 to 0, 0 to 1. This will be 1x, x1, 1x. And if we go so on, we are again having 1 to 0, right? So it will be what? It is like, eventually it's like 1 to 0, right? 1 to 0 is nothing but x1. Now, if we complete this table in this manner, right, in this particular fashion, I will complete the table for one flip-flop, right? So, I'm just telling you solution for one flip-flop. You can actually drive it for another ones. This will be the output. I'm sorry, I looked at a wrong one. And whenever I say this, right, Basically, my J3, K3 will be 0x, 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 and they will remain 0x, so on till 7. 4, 5, 6, 7, this one. And after this, they become 1x, x, and then they remain x0, x0, so on, right? Now, if we draw a K map for J3, Zero, right so what we will obtain for j3 i am just giving you an example we will have one over here all right and for this we will have this particular equation where we will say j3 is equal to q0 q1 into q2 similarly for k3 we will have an equation like this on a K map. And K3 will again will be equal to same thing. Q0, Q1, Q2. So I would uh, leave a derivation of a remaining circuits at your side. But just to give you an answer so that you could uh, tell your answer, it would be equal to Q0, Q1. K2 would be also equal to Q0, Q1 right j1 would be equal to q0 k1 will be equal to q0 j0 equal to 1 k0 will be equal to 1 and we already saw j3 was q0 q1 q2 k3 was also q0 q1 q2 
so basically our final circuit would be something like this that our first flip flop right which is like q j0 both j and k would be 1 clock would be supplied to the first edge of the clock this will be the output q0 my second flip flop would be something like this where j1 and k1 is q0 and q0 so basically this q0 will feed into j1 and k1 clock would feed into right and this will be q1 now what would happen is to the j2 this will be clock only this will be q2 this will be and of q0 and q1 similarly uh, j3 and k3 would have and of three circuits i hope uh, this was clearer and uh, basically in this particular lecture we spoke about counters we started with counters a definition of counter where we can uh, like a counter is a register where we just go through a predetermined sequence of steps right and uh, it being a ripple it could be a ripple counter or synchronous counter ripple counter is one where output of one flip-flop acts as a source for triggering other flip-flops and the design of this has to be done analytically uh, and the other counter being a synchronous where we have a common clock pulse and this can be designed using the technique which we have already seen in detail in previous lecture where we did analysis of sequential clock cycles uh, circuits as well as design of clock sequential circuits uh, we did we saw an example of ripple circuit ripple counter where we designed a 4 bit bcd counter from 0 to 9 and 9 to 0 and there we drive this circuit do spend some time on this one and then we uh, drive the designed a sequence uh, synchronous counter where we said it's a binary up counter which counts from 0 to 15 and 0 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1 and back to 0 here we will have to use we could use the d flip flop t flip flop jk flip flop using jk flip flop we will have a reduced combinational circuit but complexity comes in terms of forming state tables right uh, we saw one example i just gave you one example one set of equations for j3 and k3 flops similar equations could be worked out for j2 and k2 and final solution would be this one and this would be the final combinational circuit which it would look like and thanks for attending this lecture have a good day